Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Did you know that metals like copper are coated with another protective layer of metal to prevent it from rusting? This process is called electroplating. Electroplating employs the use of DC current. DC current can be given by batteries that store charges. However, at a larger scale, DC current is generated by using DC generators, which is the topic of our video today. A DC generator is a device that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy for use in other sources. The mechanical energy needed for the operation of the DC generator is provided by steam turbines, hand cranks, etc. They provide the mechanical energy for the rotation of the rotor, which is eventually converted into electrical energy. DC generators work on the basic principle of Faraday's law of magnetic induction. This law states that when a conductor is placed in a varying magnetic field or a moving conductor is placed in a static magnetic field, then an EMF is induced. Before learning the working of a DC generator, let us understand its construction. The outer curved structure that you see is called the yoke of the DC generator. It provides mechanical support to the structure as well as house the field windings. Connected to the yoke are rectangular structures called the pole. The field windings are wound on the pole core and it provides this magnetic flux. The pole core distributes this magnetic flux uniformly in the air gaps. This forms an electromagnet which gives a magnetic field in the generator. You will understand its use better as we move along. On the inner side, you can see an almost round structure which is not connected to the pole. This is called the armature. The armature is made up of the armature core and armature windings. The armature core is the rotor of the DC motor. It is a cylindrical structure with air ducts to allow axial airflow for cooling purposes. On the armature core's slots, copper coils are wound. These copper coils are insulated from each other. Next, we come to the only parts of the DC motor, which is physically connected to the armature winding, the commutator and the brushes. The commutators collect the current generated by the armature windings. The commutators are separated and insulated from each other. They are equal to the number of armature windings. Now let's take a look at the brushes on the commutator. These brushes rest on the commutator and slides along it as it rotates. The armature and the commutator are placed on a shaft. This concludes the construction of the DC generator. If you take a look at the image here, you can see how a DC generator which is used in industries look like. These DC generators come in smaller sizes too depending upon their application. Now let's take a look at the working of the DC generator. Here the pole core along with the pole windings form the magnetic field. The armature windings are made to rotate to generate the induced EMF. To understand the working, here we have the armature coil placed between magnetic fields. The two ends of the armature are connected to the two commutators. These commutators are fixed to the armature and move as the armature moves. Alongside the commutators, two brushes are held fixed. The direction of the current flowing through the armature is given by Fleming's right hand rule. According to this rule, if we stretch the thumb, index and middle finger of our right hand, then the thumb gives the direction of the force or motion. The index finger gives the direction of the magnetic field and the middle finger gives the direction of the current. Now, in the DC generator, current is induced when the armature plane is perpendicular to the magnetic field. To understand the working, let us name the two commutators X and Y. X is connected to the positive side and Y is connected to the negative side. As the armature is rotated, the AB side goes upward and the CD side comes downwards. If we use Fleming's right hand rule, then we'll get the direction of the current to be from A to B. Similarly, if we apply this rule on the side CD, then we will get the direction of the current to be in the downward direction. This goes on for half a rotation. As the armature completes half rotation, the side AB will now move in the downward direction and CD in the upward direction. Applying Fleming's rule again, we see that the direction of current is reversed. As the armature rotates, the direction of current reverses for every half rotation. For every half rotation, you will also notice that the commutator switches its contacts with the carbon brushes. With the current reversing its direction in the armature, the direction of current across the load does not change. Hence. We get a DC generator with output only in one direction. DC generators are essentially of two types, separately excited and self-excited. Separately excited DC generators are energized by an external source. Self-excited DC generators, on the other hand, are excited by the current produced by the generator themselves. This current is due to initial EMF, which is due to the residual magnetism in the poles. Residual magnetism is the magnetism that is left behind in the poles after the generator is switched off. The self-excited DC generators are further divided into three types, series wound, shunt wound, and compound wound. In a series wound DC generator, 
The field windings and armature winding are connected in series to each other. In shunt wound, the field windings and the armature windings are connected in parallel to each other. And in compound wound, it's a mix of series wound and parallel wound. They are further divided into long shunt compound and short shunt compound. So that's all about DC generators. In this video, we learned about the construction and working of DC generators. We'll see you again in the next video with the types of DC generators. Until then, bye.